Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the first battle report of 2024 and the third game in the ongoing First Crusade campaign. I've been joined by Robin again and we're basically ready to move on with the First Crusade as the Crusade moves on uh, and play our next game. Now for those of you who are either new to the channel or who um, didn't maybe watch the last battle report I'll leave a link below to the playlist where you can see the other two games uh, where there's an explanation of the campaign rules as well, as well as um, obviously the games themselves and the brutality that ensued. Now, if you remember the last game, um, Robin was trying to relieve a Byzantine fort that was under siege, and he did so successfully in a very brutal cavalry charge. That ended the battle phase of our first map, and we're ready to move on to a new map. Now, um, we did all of the aftermath for all of the characters. Um, we will run through and have a recap. Um, in fact, let's just do that now. That would probably be easier. So, last game, one of my commanders was essentially brutally, brutally killed, and his division completely mauled. Now, I created a new character to lead that division, um, who is this chap. His name is Al-Gahib. Um, he is a Seljuk, um, and he's taken over the division, and it only has two force points. Unfortunately, one of those um, force points, or one of those units, has to be designated as wavering, and has to be designated as wavering every game until that division participates in a battle where they achieve some kind of victory. And then they stop being worried. Now, um, Al-Gahib actually brings with him a unit of fanatics to the game. So two, a small unit, two bases of fanatics that essentially follow him around. Um, they're inspired by him and they're a bit reckless. And, they, fought, and you know, they, they basically are meant to... I don't want to say they're going to assist him. They're probably going to do more harm than good. Um, in the first game, uh, my commander, Alp Baradir, he actually uh, didn't suffer any losses and one of his units can be designated as elite from now on. So that's about the only good thing that happened for the Seljuks. On the other side, Kamal Adin, he, um, his division in the last game was winded and it basically just means he loses a force point for the next game and the next game only. So he was um, my commander who could field the most and so he can probably absorb those losses. Now Robin on his side, on the First Crusade side, none of his characters suffered any, should we say, ill effects. It was just losses in force points, except for the chap up the top, Hugh de Caprino, who is still rampaging around the Holy Land with six points worth of troops. Uh, William de Morbier, he went down to four points. Uh, and on the other side, Robert de Bouchonroy, he's down to three points. So Robin's got a fair spread of troops, but nothing that's, um, should we say, particularly uh, a particularly bad effect yet. Now, of course, these um, these campaign rules are the ones that we've been playing around with. Um, and just to go over things quickly, we have a strategy phase where we place our armies on each map. We have a battle phase where we resolve all of the battles. And in the last battle phase, there were two battles. And then we have the reconsolidation phase, which is what we're going to do now. And very simply, what happens is, is we... <clears throat> Excuse me. We roll on this table and apply the game effect and also the lists and recruitment or reallocation of points that we can do. So, for example, I, I, you just do one roll for your entire army. You don't roll per commander. I rolled a four. A four on here would be rebellion. Roll again and consult the chart in the next column. Four. Defection. Randomly pick one of your lords. They suffer minus 0.5 force points while the closest enemy army receives plus 0.5 force points. That should be a random enemy army <laughs> receives that. Um, and over here you can see you don't receive any reinforcements or recruitment, um, but you can reallocate one force point between commanders. So it allows us to level things out. It means that there are some things in here that might give you quite a lot of force points back. Um, however, um, you're, you might not be able to reallocate, so you might end up with troops who are a bit strung out. The whole thing is it's, meant, it's not meant to completely heal you and, meant, and mean that the games you've played have no effect, but it is meant to allow for some tactical decisions. So this is the first thing we've got to do to end, essentially, our first campaign map. And then we move on to the next one. We're going to place our armies, uh, and then we're going to fight the first battle. So let's get cracking. Okay, so Robin's going to roll first for his uh, consolidation roll. Go for it. Oh, oh a nine. Ah, uh, eight arrives. Right, you get to roll again. So roll a d6. A five. 
A spy, a man from the enemy has contacted you with their positions and plans. Before the start of the next battle, an opposing player uh, must reveal one of their army tokens selected by you before you reveal yours. You can then swap your token with another that has yet to be revealed. Hmm. So that's pretty good. You, um, so yeah, that's, that's, Robin can essentially move his armies around. As we can see, he doesn't recruit any points, um, and he can't reallocate any. Either, which seems kind of fitting That's fine, for, yeah, for the Crusaders. You need the points more than uh, I'm okay for. I need to just sort of hear, like, right, let's see what uh, what I get here. Oh. Uh, four. Oh, no. I got Rebellion. Uh, roll again and consult the chart. A three. Insurrection. One of the areas that you control rises up against you seeking support of the opposition. Randomly determine which division is closest. They must send 0.5 force points to quell the unrest. Um, that means in the next game, 0.5 force points are not available, but they return in the consolidation phase. It's great. Brilliant. So I, if, that, if, that, if that's my, um, my rubbish uh, unit, then we could be in with some problems. So let's, let's have a look. Okay, so we will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Who's it going to be? 2. Uh, it is Kamaladin, who, to be fair, has the most points. So he could only actually field 5 points because he was winded. And now he's down to four and a half um, for his next game. So we will make note of that. But you can um, reallocate a point, can't you? Uh, yes, I can. So I've got one point that I can reallocate. Um, I think that what I'm going to do is reallocate one point from Alp Baradir, who's got five points. He's going to reallocate one point to Al Ghalib. So he'll go down to four points, he'll go up to three points, and he's down to 4.5. Are reallocations permanent, or are they...? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so the reallocations are basically troops being moved, moved around. Between. That's it, it's, it's permanent, um, and there we go. So that ends the consolidation phase. Um, we will move on to the strategy turn. Okay, so you recognise this as the previous map. So obviously we, this is where we fought our battles. The Siege of Nicaea was going on and has now ended. The Byzantines had done their sneaky thing where they came across um, Lake Ascanius and they got into the uh, the city. Um, I got that right, I think. <laughs> Ascanius, yeah, I did. Um, and they came into the city uh, and it surrendered. Crusaders, not too happy with the Byz Byzantines at the moment, but they've now left the city and they are now marching towards Antioch, which takes them... There we go, this way. So the maps do sort of go together. Um, so they come down, they carry on uh, to the southeast, and they come down this road here. And in their future is the Battle of Doraleum. Now, they don't know that. We know that. So we've uh, we've happily called this the Road to Doraleum. So this is June to July in 1097. So the Crusader army is coming down this road here. And um, the armies of the Seljuks are harassing them in the hills and along the rivers on the way. So, how are we going to do this? We will do this exactly the same way as we did before. We will um, assign a colour to each of our divisions. Um, and we will blindly, well I say blindly, we will put them down so the opponent can't see. Put them against the battle locations and then we will flip them over to see which armies have been sent there. Now, last uh, map we had three battle locations. This one we only have two. And both of these affect the oncoming battle um, at Doraleum. So, the first game uh, that we have up here is a meeting engagement. Essentially, the armies are looking for good places to camp and to rest. Um, the Crusaders have just done the Siege of Nicaea. They're marching. Um, they're looking for somewhere sheltered and somewhere where they can, you know, reorder their troops. The Seljuks are looking for somewhere where they can basically launch their attacks from or flank the Crusading army. So, that game there will be a meeting engagement as per the Hail Caesar uh, rulebook. It will also, the winning commanders over here will get to recruit immediately one force point into their divisions. That's the bonus there. And they will then obviously be available to take place in the battle. So we've added a new symbol. All armies that are used here are available for the battle, which will happen on, a, on another map. Down here, we have a, uh, a simple take the crossing escort mission. Um, and basically, the if the bridge is taken, 
then that will allow um, movement of troops at the start of the Battle of Doraleum. So whoever owns the bridge is going to find themselves basically a, with us a little bit more um, options for manoeuvrability right at the start of the battle. Um, obviously, our commanders don't know... Um, well, the commanders don't know this. We know this <laughs> because we've been chatting about it. Um, but that's where we stand. So what we've got to do is go away. Now, remember, Robin actually now has four armies because he has a small Byzantine uh, contingent that can, uh, that can take place in the next battle. So he will be putting four of them down. So he could just go two and two or he could put all four into capturing the bridge. So we're going to put these down, we'll reveal the armies, and then we'll get going. Okay, so the armies have been selected. So I will put mine down first. So there we go. Now, Robin can put his down. But remember, before he reveals any of his, he can make me reveal one of mine first if he wants to swap them around because he got the spy in the consolidation. So there we go. Now, remember, you're only put, we're only putting down as many tokens as there are battles. So if there were four battle sites on here, we put down four tokens, but there's only three armies. We know, well, Robin's got four armies, four divisions. I've got three. So how have we spread those out? So Robin, because you got the spy... I am going to use my spy, and I'd like to see what you've did, what you've sent down the road to the bridge. What I've sent to the bridge? Yeah. Uh, to the bridge, I have sent a single uh, division, and that is the division under Kamal Adin. That's the chap who uh, who suffers from illnesses. He's got that, the winded division. Biggest, it's the biggest. Force. It's the big biggest force, yeah. Right. In that case, then knowing, seeing you a large dust trail marking that way, I will switch my armies. <laughs> okay. God, then let's see what what have you sent to the bridge? So I've sent the Byzantines and uh, William de Morbier. William de Morbier. That's uh, Tim Nice but Dim, isn't it? That's the uh, that's the cavalry chappy, isn't it? Uh, no, no, that is. Um... Oh yes, it is. Yeah, yes, yeah, the uh... strong in right. arm but not in mind. Strong in arm but not in mind. Okay, so that's going to be so up here. I have two of my divisions have gone, um, and that is Al, the new chap, Al Galib. And uh, my my uh, the guy who actually did something called Alp Baradir. So who have you sent up there? So I've sent Hugh de Caprino, the Army General, and Robert de Boucheron. Okay, so, right. So this is how is it? So the first game we're going to play is going to be the Battle in the Hills. Um, let's get the army selected. We'll get the battlefield set up, and we'll get cracking. Here we go. This is the uh, campaign round two. Okay, so here we are, the uh, battle in the hills, and uh, there's quite a few hills uh, across the table, um, and we tried to leave it not filled with scenery. There's uh, we've got a uh, sort of a wood over here, small farmer's shack over there. He's been farming his his vines over here, and a small wood over there. So there's there's plenty of room for manoeuvrability. So we are playing the meeting engagement, which can be found in the Hail Caesar rulebook and um, adding our own victory conditions on top of the ones that are already in there. We are going to be playing for six turns, rolling for a seventh. Um, points are going to be awarded as follows, and that's going to be one victory point for shaken units at the end of the game, two victory points for each uh, enemy unit destroyed or off the table and not coming back, five victory points for for each enemy division that is broken. So we are playing with the broken divisions rule. Uh, and also one extra victory point if you kill an enemy commander. So there's going to be quite a few up for grabs. Um, we're going to be rolling to see who goes first. And our troops are going to be moving on to the battlefield. We've got two divisions each. Um, and uh, I've got quite a lot of cavalry. I, I imagine, Robin, you've got a fair bit of infantry. In fact, I can sort of see it over there. I'm going solid, yes. You're going solid infantry. So uh, we're going to see how this plays out. In terms of scenery, um, this area here counts as a zone. Um, and then we have impassable um, terrain in terms of the walls. Over here, this building here, um, I don't really know if that counts as a zone. This one, we've got cover just in there. But if you're in with the vines, and um, you're absolutely fine. The wood over here, this is going to block movement for formed troops. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So I'll be moving in from this side. Robin will be moving in from that side. Um, let's get everything set up. In fact, should we just see who's, uh, who's going to go first? Yeah, let's roll off. Okay, let's see who's going to have the first turn. Probably not me. 
definitely not me if you use one of my own dice against me as well. What, <laughs> um, do you want to go first or second? I will go... Uh, second. Second. All right. So, Seljuk turn one. What I'll do is we'll get stuff on the board and then I'll uh, go through what there actually is. So, here we go. Turn one. Okay, so here we are, and uh, Alt Baradir has entered the battlefield. Now, the way meet and engagement works, Robin, you you just read this. You explain how it how they go onto the board. So divisions or battles come on one per turn from the first turn. Um, so obviously we've only got two divisions, so it'll just be one in the first turn, one in the second turn, unless you blunder. The only difference with the, you do a roll is how far they might come on. Which affects you more because you've got cavalry, so yeah. if you failed your roll, they'd only come on six inches, which obviously for your cavalry is less It's than not great, cavalry. yeah. yeah. Um, if you scale the game up to have more divisions, you get the option of things like delaying units or force marching divisions onto the table at the risk of wearing them out to get them there earlier, which would create some interesting tactical choices. But obviously this is a smaller a smaller meeting engagement, so it'll just be we'll have two waves of troops. Yeah. Okay, so just to run through what we've got, we've got Alt Baradir. Now he had four force points available to him, um, so I've kind of gone with a, a mounted elite force for him. So um, for what uh, for one force point, they've taken a small unit of uh, light light cavalry and upgraded them uh, to elite. Uh, so that cost a point. I took another um, unit of light cavalry, and his um, ability, his victory thing last turn was he could upgrade one to elite for free. So that was one. And a half points so uh, they're elite for three i've got a small unit of heavy cavalry for half a point which is two upgraded um to elite for uh two and a half points i've got some camelry um which puts me up to three points and a unit of levy archers to four points so a nice little very fast moving division there um that is actually it <laughs> there's nothing else it is one of these uh one of these games where i think there's gonna be a lot of movement in the first couple yeah, of no, turns nothing's gonna die in the first two turns no Probably. and then swiftly afterwards so let's get on with the first crusader turn Right, okay, so uh, one of the Crusader divisions has managed to enter. Robin, who is this? So this is uh, Robert de Boucheron. He is universally disliked by poor people, universally liked by rich people. He is definitely a man of a man of the classes. He, he smells money, <laughs> yeah, basically. So, he, so Hang on, let me say, he, he dislikes the poor and likes the rich. Yes. Right, okay. He's very much the opposite of Robin Hood. Um, <laughs> so his rules, he... Oh, sorry, his forces. So we bought it's only a small force, heavy infantry, one point, heavy infantry, one point, a small unit of um, double handed weapons, uh. which is one point. However, with his rules, I get to I have to designate one unit of heavy infantry as freshly raised. Yep. However, so basically, his thing is because of how he pays his troops or doesn't pay his troops. They don't always stay in his employ no. for very long. However, because he's well connected with the, the, the princes, elite, yeah. the troops that he then does get are generally of good quality. So I can designate one of my units as steady, and I also have to designate one unit as freshly raised. Okay, so how who who's so going to be freshly raised? I'm going to designate this unit on the flank as freshly raised, yeah. and then the one in the middle... Oh, it's steady. That's right. I thought you were going to make the double-handed. I didn't think uh, about. It. Oh no, actually, no. Let's make the double. You the don't double have handed. to. Don't. No, no, I don't think. Yeah. Really <laughs> uh, I was going. To, let's let's do that. Double-handed guys. Steady. Okay. All right. So that's going to be interesting. So there we go. So there's the Ophi. So they've come on on that flank there. So you have no shooting over there at all, do you? So no. we're going to whip through these. Let's just get into turn two and get things moving.
Okay, so there's been quite a bit of movement on the Seljuk side. So first of all, Alp Baradir has moved his division, for, he's moved all but one thing in his division forward, light cavalry, cresting the hill, so I could get in shooting range. And uh, Robin, you checked, was it? It's just his unit, just his unit front will be loosing some arrows down at the Crusaders. So over here you can see we've got all of the lights have come up to the top of the hill, heavy cavalry waiting patiently. I did try to move these archers, um, as Robin pointed out, they've just been left in a cloud of dust uh, as the uh, as the main part of the division moved and then I bought on the new boy Al Ghalib he's come on cresting the hill over here he's bought on some light cavalry at the front we've got some mercenary crossbowmen here here's his small unit of fanatics that follow him around and here are some mercenary heavy infantry now um because his division took a mauling before he took it over i had to designate one unit as wavering and that is these guys and they basically have to take a break test as soon as they've taken a casualty in the battle but i did pay for this other unit to be upgraded to elite so that is actually three points worth of stuff so in our little force point system it can go a long way so even though this is what i think some would probably still call a skirmish there's still 10 units um, on the Seljuk side, um, who are, I think I'm, well, I'm at a force point disadvantage, aren't I? I've got, I brought nine. you've brought nine, I've got seven, so I've actually got to, but all yours are pumped into heavy cavalry. Um, so, let's get on with the shooting. Uh, the only part of the shooting will be my, uh, my horse archers at the front, and they will loose them down at that formed heavy infantry unit there. So, I get two shots. I'm over 12 inches, uh, which is minus one, and I'm firing at formed heavy infantry in their front arc, which is minus one Six. as well. So, yep, sixes, meaning I need two sixes if I want to cause a break test. No re-rolls. And no hits either. Right, what an eventful turn that was. So, right, Robin, see if Robin can bring on the other unit and, uh, well, let's just see what he's going to do. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Robin, where do you want to start? With the chaps that turned yeah, up so or the advance? Oh, so I'll start with here because I've brought Hugh de Caprino on, my army general, with his um, six points. So a very simple force. One point of infantry, one point of infantry, one point of crossbows, one point of infantry, two points of heavy cavalry because they've been upgraded with tough fighter and stubborn. So, yeah, I so might be. have to divert this unit <laughs> through yeah, there. The idea is that if they can catch something, they'll deal with it. And if they can't catch something, they'll at least get it. After the last game's heavy cavalry incident, I'm not <laughs> keen for there to be a response. Okay, so it's quite... You, we've filled out the battlefield. Um, what happened over here? I see that troops have advanced all at once. Yeah, I don't have any shooting, so... And you're only going to run away anyway, so I've just moved forward. So kind of... I'm just going for that shield wall thing of... I'm just going to walk forward and hopefully you'll flee before me until I... Um, until I... Do, that's, uh, or you run out of room to flee. See, my plan is fully full of arrows until you get disordered and run away. That's my, that's my plan. So, <laughs> there we go. So we my, might... Mine is to try not to get disordered and hope you run away. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So, there is sort of the overview of the battlefield at the moment. So, it's quite an open game at the minute. So, let's get into turn three. We might actually get some combat going now. Um, let's just get on with it. Okay, so a round of repositioning for the Seljuks. Let's start over here. Um, I tried to get um, Al-Ghahib's move, uh, moving. Didn't work. 
So I've got one unit up there that's going to go and rain some arrows down over there. And I tried to move these guys up and then the whole lot failed. So they made it to the battle. They're just hanging out. Over here, I wanted the heavy cavalry to turn and charge Robin's heavy cavalry. I got to move off to turn. They didn't quite have enough movement. So they're just sitting there. Basically, they're eyeing each other up over that very open plane. At least you want to get charged to the flank. Well, that's true. I'm going to, uh, we're going to sort of bottleneck it there. The archers have moved up to the top of the hill, so I, they're out of range, but they will be able to do some shooting later if stuff moves into range. And over here, a lot of repositioning um, for some arrows. So let's start with the shooting. Well, it is only shooting. I think we'll start with the uh, this unit here. So they will shoot at the nearest unit, which I believe is actually going to be so the same unit they fired at is actually the nearest unit. Um, don't if you don't mind checking, no, you're under twelve. So under twelve, it's so it's just a minus one. one because they are um, formed heavy infantry. Formed heavy infantry, right? Hitting on fives. Ooh, uh, one hit and a, a break test. So you need two saves of four, I believe. One save, you hit fives. Oh, fives. Bugger. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep. but still a break test at the end. Oh, here we go. That's at the end. Oh, yes, of course, all the shooting. These guys, they're going to fire at the same unit. Here we go. Uh, another hit, another save. Yep. Hmm, okay, uh, the javelins, are, they'll be at the same unit as well. And they all missed. Okay, so um, do I have any other shooting? Yeah. I do, over here. Are they within 12? Uh, yes, they are. They are? Okay, so they'll be firing. Same thing, minus one, because they are formed heavy infantry. Oh. And another hit and another break test. It's been a six and a one on every roll you Six and a one. Oh. Oh, a casualty. First blood. Uh, right, we'll get that sorted out. We'll just do the break tests. Uh, okay. Let's do this one over here yep. first. All right, so... Sorry, which one? They'll do that one there first. Okay, go on then. I'm going to run off the table. Nope. They're okay. absolutely fine. And this one in the middle, isn't it? Come on. <gasps> nope. Oh, I thought I was tantalised. I just wanted them to we'll come to the top of the hill and then we'll, we'll run away again. All right, okay, there we go. There are the positions. And let's go into Crusader turn three. Okay, so an interesting turn from the Crusaders, Robin. I so over here, I'm pretty pleased. So I didn't catch anything, but then I don't with your cavalry, I don't expect to catch anything. No. So it's more kind of I'm going to move forward. If I catch you, I'll chop you bits. Yeah. If I don't catch you, at least you're now all over the place a little bit. So I managed to force the unit back there. That sent the camel riders all the way. Yeah, back. they're all the way over here. They've uh, they made a big retreat. Um, and I move forward, so I do need to start killing things. But I you've got range things. I need I need to hit you. You, so, you you've you've spread out. And you've got the whole. The thing is, you've got that nice wide open space now. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it comes to it, I'll just eventually have to pin you against the back of the board <laughs> and <laughs> then hack you to death. <laughs> um, so over here, not quite so successful. So I went to charge over here, again, thinking, yes, I might you'll probably just drive you off. I'll, at least I can get some momentum going forwards. Um, failed. Use a general's reroll. Blundered. And then just moved forward a little bit less than I intended. But that meant that nothing else was going to happen this turn. I did manage to move the crossbows forward, but again, not very far. I think they're out of range, aren't they? Yeah, they're not going to be in range of anything. anything. So you've got, you've got nothing, I've again, got nothing. unfortunately. You haven't rolled any dice yet. No, but... Well, you look intimidating. You do, right? We look, look organised. You, yeah, I don't at the minute. I've got ones going this way, this way. What camels coming back? These guys don't know really what's going on. Right. Okay. Let's get on with the next Seldrick turn. It's going to be a quick game. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so, oh, let's see. Um, <laughs> over here, things things happened. Um, the heavy cavalry tried to charge uh, Robin's heavy cavalry. I'd only made it halfway. They are now going to be within initiative charge range next turn, so the heavy cavalry will probably be having a, a bit of a fight next time. Archers have stayed where they are. This unit of light uh, cavalry have moved around so they can shoot into the flank of the um, the double-handed uh, weapon chaps there, nullifying the heavy infantry bonus from the front. And over here, these guys have done the same. So that division has kind of been split up by what Robin did, moving to the top of the hill. Over on this side, my cr mercenary crossbowmen have taken uh, command and control of the little vineyard here, so they'll be firing out from that. Up over here, we've got uh, more light cavalry that's moved forward to do some shooting. Uh, and over here, these, these bits of infantry didn't do anything. I am very conscious that I need to start putting some casualties or some disorder um, among the crusaders and then attack with the cavalry and actually sort of try and get some charges off. But we're just going to go into the shooting phase. And I think we will start We'll start over here with yeah. these chaps at the bottom of the hill, firing up the hill. Minus one to hit because it's heavy infantry, so hitting on fives. Both missed. This unit here, are they within 12? Yep. They are, so they are hitting on fours because they are definitely not heavy infantry. Hitting on fours. Oh, two hits. Uh, two saves of five, five. I believe. One casualty. These guys actually do have bows. Oh, don't forget them. Oh, oh yes, sorry, different division. Uh, these guys are crossbows. They're going to be at long range. So they'll be firing. So that's going to be two dice hitting on fives. Oh, one more save of five and a break test. Another casualty. Okay, so these guys are all armed with bows as well. So they are going to fire at the heavy cavalry in front of them. So it's going to be two dice hitting on fours. Duh. Things are not going well for these expert archers. Um, these guys here firing into the side of the double-handed weapons chaps. They're going to be hitting on fours. That's uh, so another break test and one save. I ignore the first six because I'm steady. You're the first six. Oh, what? The first six, not the first six hits. Like the first. <laughs> so the first six of a. Oh, right. A, okay. A turn or a phase. I'll check with you. Oh, okay, so, so, I, so no break test. I need to put another one on you. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm doing the save, though. Um, five. Five. Cause no, it's four. Off. Still four. Still four, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, over here, these guys firing into their side. These guys are wavering, so if I can put a casualty on them, yeah, they've got to take a break, break test. test right. All right, I'm hitting on fours because I'm shooting into their flank. Unless I miss with both shots. Okay, so break test-wise, it's just the crossbows, isn't it? So just 2d6. And they're not going anywhere. I feel like I've wasted a lot of opportunities here. Um, <laughs> so, oh, I think we might as well just see what Robin's going to do. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of units contacting now. Okay, so Robin has made big advances and the Crusaders have pushed forward and engaged. Robin, where do you want to start? Um, so over here, I wanted to get a charge off here, whether I make it or not, but I'm just kind of moving yeah. around the board, but didn't manage to do that, just turned to face. Same over there, just on their initiative in the end, just turned to face. That um, denies me my, um, yeah, sort of like, well, you, you're better. You just I'm trying to avoid better. getting casualty, because taking a break test for taking one casualty would be a bit annoying. Yes. Because I'm wavering, you wouldn't be in that position. Um, <laughs> over here, obviously big news, is my heavy cavalry, well, we're both charging, aren't we? I counted, you charged, I counted, charged. And, and then I came in to help. You've got men in support. You've taken uh, this little area here. Yeah, which... that's not a charge, we're not actually in, I'm just... There. There, yep. Um, crossbows moved up, they were keen. And then over here, again, a knowing it would fail charge, but... It forced me back. Move you backwards. Um, okay, so there's been a fair bit, and I the problem is, is now I need... This This game is about casualties, and I my, my archery has not produced many, so I've got to start basically pushing these guys up. Where do you want to start with your shooting? Um, I will start and finish here. 
Is that it? Yeah. I thought you had more than that for yeah. some reason. Okay, so you've got some crossbows. Um, you have three dice, because you're a, a not standard unit, so three dice. You're shooting at these guys. They're not a clear target, so you're hitting on fives. No. That's a no. no. That is annoying. Yes, especially because you needed one casualty on me for me to have to take a break test, because they're wavering. Um, <laughs> I feel quite good about that now. Well, let's do this then. Right, okay, so <laughs> let's work out dice. So you have your... Uh, heavy cavalry who get nine dice on the charge so and you're plus one to hit so you're going to be hitting on freeze my small unit of heavy cavalry um, they get seven dice on the charge now i'm tough fighters because i upgraded are you tough fighters yeah i upgraded i'm stubborn and tough fighters. you're stubborn and tough fighters and i'm elite and tough fighters so okay so i have seven dice re-rolling one you have nine dice, re-rolling one, and then you have three dice in support from the heavy infantry. I have lances as well, I just need to check what they do, and if you can remember. Uh, I can't off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, so uh, the lances are a minus one to my save. So, Robin, you've got nine attacks incoming from the heavy cavalry. So, hitting on freeze, re-rolling one. Six. Six hits. I have. Uh, oh, you've got your three supports as well. Do you want to roll those now? Yep. Okay, so these are hitting on fours. One more. One more. Okay, I have seven attacks, also hitting on threes, re rolling one. Oh. I had five. Okay, so Robin, you need five saves of four. four. Two casualties. Okay, and I need seven saves, was it? Yeah, so I assume it's six saves. Six saves of five, five, and then one of four. So six saves of five. Uh, that's four casualties, and then one save of four. So four casualties. You've taken two casualties. You have won the combat by two. So I'm taking a break test. 2d6 oh. minus two. Stub. Oh, no, you're not stubborn. No, I'm, I'm not stubborn. Yo, you're stubborn. stubborn, yeah. No. <laughs> so 2d6 minus 2 for my break test. Uh, uh, so minus 2 is 5? 5, yeah. I think it's at a... Uh, it's I think it's retreat, retreat disordered. It's got to be a retreat of some kind, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, retreat disordered. Retreat disordered. Okay, brilliant. We'll just get it sorted out and then come back. Okay, so as you can see here, my guys have moved back disordered and Robin has uh, pursued uh, and done a sweeping advance into them. Um, the guys back there don't get to uh, to follow up with them, unfortunately. So Robin is going to get another nine dice hitting on freeze and I am going to get, because uh, it's another clash, so I'll get seven dice, but I'm hitting on fives. Okay, Robin, you're looking for freeze, re-rolling one. Five? Okay, I'm looking for fives, re-rolling one. Oh. Uh, oh, it's not quite as good. So three, four. So three. Three. Yeah. Three. So I'm taking three saves of four, re-rolling one. Yep. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm taking uh, five saves of five, re-rolling nothing. Uh, that's four more casualties, which is double my stamina. Is that the uh, uh, you have, um, uh, what's it, shattered uh, the unit. So they're gone. I have no one in support. Um, they are destroyed. And, uh, for, well, I was about to say first blood. I got the first casualty, but you have, I would say you've, uh, you've destroyed the first unit. Well, you, I wouldn't say you have. You just have obliterated the unit. All right, then. All right, let's clear up the, the dead. Okay, Robin, how do you feel about that, then? <laughs> Pretty good, pretty good. I am now just a tad concerned for my archers. Um, to be fair though, you've taken two Six. casualties. Right then, okay, let's get on. That's it, isn't it, for you? Let's uh, yeah. Let's get on with the next Seljuk turn and see if we can get some payback. Okay, so it's time for a little bit of payback. 
On this flank over here, I've moved my Fanatics up uh, to the top of the hill. I'm gonna try and relieve pressure over here a little bit. My horse archers have formed a line to try and give fire. These guys are holding the vineyards, so there's no problem. My uh, mercenaries managed to make three moves, uh, move through this unit. Um, one thing that did happen was bad, they disordered themselves as they went through the unit. So um, they are going to be receiving a charge disordered. I basically just wanted to try and stop that heavy cavalry unit from rampaging through my lines. The cool thing is, because these guys are up on the hill, they're firing over the top. Camels have formed the line. Um, I don't think they're in range of anything, but they're there just to help. These guys move from over here around to the flank again, so they can just shoot into that unit, hopefully get some uh, casualties on there. And then over here, these guys have pulled back a little bit. I just need to put one casualty on that unit to make them take a break test. So there's going to be a lot of shooting, no hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, and then gearing up to receive the charges next turn. So we'll start at this end of the board. Starting with the first unit over here, um, firing at this unit here. So they are going to get two dice and they're going to be hitting on fives because I'm firing at formed heavy infantry. Okay, come on. Yay. Uh, so you need to take a break test at the end of a turn. And you took a casualty. This unit are going to fire at the, uh, the crossbows. They're within 12, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so they are hitting on fours. Uh, one hit, one save of five. Nope. Another casualty. Um, I think these guys have to fire at your... They're closer. You they're, they're closer, yeah. yeah. Um, so my crossbows will fire at them. They're going to cap their saves at five, so it's going to be interesting. So I've got two dice just hitting on fours. Oh, that's one, and they're going to be taking a break test. So oh, one save of five. Nope. Nope. Ooh. Crossbows, that's the way. Heavy cavalry in crossbows. My um, archers on the hill will fire at them as well. They're going to get three dice, um, but we've always said it's minus one when you're firing over the heads yeah. of your own troops. So they're hitting on fives. That's uh, two hits. Uh, I was taking a break you're test. You're taking a break test anyway. So uh, two saved. saves of four. Yep. Both saved. Okay, so currently taking a break test is the unit on there, the okay. heavy cavalry. Moving along, they're these guys, javelins, they're javelins, yes, they're just out of range. These guys here firing into the flank of the double-handed weapon unit, so they're going to be hitting on fours. <laughs> the, their bows just snap. <laughs> and then the one that I really want to get, get off, these guys firing at them, hitting on fives. I need, I need one casualty here, and I'm not going to get it. Right, time for your break tests. All right, let's start with the crossbow. Uh, not the crossbows, the uh, infantry. Infantry over there, just 2d6 straight. No. The right, big right. one. Sorry, These guys here. There you go. Damn. Right, okay. So uh, they, they are going to uh, to hit home those uh, cavalry charges. Okay, let's go into the Crusader turn. Okay, so we've reached that point in the battle. The battle lines have formed up, and this is probably, in our battle reports, one of the longest battle lines we've we've ever had. I think there's only actually about two units in combat. Oh, no, it's three. three. But have a look at this. So we've got combat down here. We've got guys who have pushed back the Seljuks. We have combat with supports here. Then we have combat in the vineyard. And you have all of these guys over here. The Crusaders have pushed forward. Robin, why don't you just chat through what happened? Because you started with this division, didn't you? Yeah, we started you? with that division. I just went that way. No, so... Initiative charge, because you couldn't do anything because you were disordered. And that was, I guess, unfortunate for you coming through. But mm. I would have charged... It would have been worse off for charge here. My one charge. resounding thing is that these are heavy. Yeah. That's my, that's my hope that that's going to hold. But you have got these guys in support. And lances. Um... Managed to get three moves. That was a long distance That charge. was inexplicable. Just Did, charge. Took some it? shooting on the way in, but it's fine. 
Crossbows don't need to move. I'm just going to do a casualty on that wavering unit. Yeah. That's your, yeah, see, that was my plan over failed. there. If you failed all games do that, it was going to happen. And then here, I've just... Oh, again, I've driven off the cavalry again. Up the hill. I'm just moving everything... You you have sort of advanced over halfway over the board, um, considering. So I started and did that typical Seldrick thing. I've pushed over the board, and you've driven me back because it's that's my, happen. you know. Um, so there is combat everywhere over here. You pushed this lot back through the through the woods. Yep. So they are like cavalry, so they can move through woods, but at the speed of infantry, not cavalry. And I've just basically moved up and, to the edge of the. And woods. then I had a bit of a mess up. So you charged, so Robin charged his unit of light cavalry, got three moves off, so I needed to just n basically get more than one move off. Yeah, you needed two to get off. And I blundered. And the blunder means I just sit there and take the charge. Well, they're looking at them just completely surprised. I've noticed as well that um, in here you've got one of my Saxons with his massive double-handed axe. <laughs> so he's happy. Um, so there we go. So we have a lot of combat to sort through. Um, we are in sort of the second half of the game. So is this going to be the part where sort of like the tide? I was about to say the tide turns, but it wasn't really going any going any particular way. Um, shooting. You've just got one unit. You've got your crossbows, and I assume they're shooting at my light cavalry. I have realised though, I am in combat. Even if we just see how we have to check out works with wavering because I could win the combat, but maybe still end up taking a break test. If I take yes, a casualty. You would, yeah. So a bit. I imagine it's like as you draw. Just realised something. What's that? They're not wavering, are they? They're freshly raised. The counter was actually meant to be oh, yeah. just to represent it. Yeah, sorry. So you've actually been trying to do something all game that. Oh yeah. So I need to. I will have to roll to see if how good they are. Which we'll do on their on their turn, right? So basically, I've been trying to get. They're not fresh. They're not fresh. No, they're freshly they're raised. They're freshly raised. They're not wavering. I'm wavering. Yes. I need to get some more counters made. But they could end up to be awful in combat now. Well, they could also. End I don't up know if they'd be worse than your light horse, but we'll find out. Um, <laughs> right. Shooting. So these guys shooting at them, hitting on fives. Up to open order. Yes. Oh, no. Good. Um, I say oh, on sixes. I guess the wavering doesn't really matter now because you're break testing. Uh, so one save. Um, and a break test. And a break test. Um, and that's all, that's. Will be now because it's the end of the shooting. Okay. So just a straight up break test. They're fine. Uh, they're not wavering anymore now, are they? No, nope, the nope. they, they, uh, they took the crossbow bolt and uh, yeah, no, that's it. Right, so, right, let's uh, hang on, let's sort this out and then get into combat. Okay, so we're gonna do this one first. So, um, the Normans that are assaulting into the vineyard, again, seven attacks as their heavy infantry, they are hitting on threes. My crossbowmen, being the uh, highly trained individuals they are, get two dice, uh, and I'm hitting on fours. However, I get plus one to my save, making it a whopping five. Uh, so, Robin, you are you tough fighters or anything like that? Stubborn. Uh, stubborn. Uh, okay, so that counts for saves if I do actually manage to hit. So, Robin, you've got seven dice hitting on threes. Four. Four hits. Okay. That's I'm, more than you can possibly do. I'm hitting on fours. Also. One, uh, you need one save of four. Okay, Stubborn. <laughs> ah, okay, and what did I need? Four saves. Yeah. Four saves of five. Three casualties, so I'm not shaken, um, but I'm very, very close. Uh, so it's a straight break test, 2d6, minus three. Yeah, they're gone. One is bad. Okay, so these guys are gone. Are you going to take... Yeah. The vineyard and the Norman's going to get in there and get some of that white. Oh, no, that's really bad. I just have noted really Because, of course, you take the whole, you count as occupying the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I'm coming out that way. Or right? that way. Or that way. Yeah. Right, okay. So let's get this sorted out and then we'll be right back. Okay, so there they are. The Crusaders have taken the vineyard. Um, and they're ready to uh, launch an attack that way. So we're we just going to carry on down. Carry on down the so the heavy cavalry have a clash of nine against my clash of seven. So you're hitting on threes. Are you tough fighters? You are, aren't you? I'm everything. You're everything. Uh, <laughs> my uh, mercenary heavies here uh, don't have anything special. They just get seven attacks. But I am disordered, so I'm hitting on fives. You've got nine dice hitting on threes, re-rolling one, and you get three dice hitting on fours in support. Wow. Okay, so, uh, Robin, do you want to roll first? All right, so you're looking for threes, re-rolling one for Tough Fighter. Oh, my God. Oh. All right, so that's seven. Seven. And then you get three dice hitting on fours. Oh. 
Okay, so seven. I have seven attacks coming back, hitting on fives. Uh, two. two. Okay, so you need two saves of four. <laughs> I need seven saves. I have lost of, it, so five. Uh, I'm not actually sure. Hang on one You're second. Heavy on it. Okay, so I'm fours normally, five with lances. Um, seven casualties. <laughs> so I'm not shattered, um, but I am rolling 2d6 minus seven for my break test. <sighs> yeah, they're, they're gone as well. And I assume you're going to just go straight into the archers. As yes. Absolutely. All right, okay, let's uh, take these off the board. Okay, so Robin annihilated my unit of uh, heavy infantry and has just smashed into the archers who missed with all of their closing shots. Um, so it's time for another round of combat. So Robin, you get nine again. Uh, I get a whopping four, <laughs> which is actually more than the last unit. So right then, so I get four dice. I am hitting on fours. You have nine dice hitting on threes. Rerolling one for tough fighter. That's better. Oh, please let the archers see them off. Three. No, you had some threes there, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, sorry, so, yeah. So five. five yeah. Right. Uh, hitting on fours. Two. Uh, you need two saves of four. Oh, oh two stubborn. dead. Stubborn. No. Yes, yeah. still two dead. Yeah. Right, come on. I need saves of six. No. Five. Uh, so I lost the combat by three. So it's 2d6 minus 3 for the break test. Uh, 3? I think that's going to be a retreat because I'm not um, I'm not shaken yet. So uh, uh, I think it's a retreat disordered. Yep, yeah, break if shaken, otherwise retreat disordered. All right. Okay, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so the archers who have retreated to there, the Normans have stopped their killing spree for now. Oh no, there's still one more. There is one over there. Down you, here. You can just imagine the archers though, as that heavy unit moved through, they went, yeah, yeah, go on, you... You, you go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. Yeah, carry on. Bloody hell. I need to roll for my unit. Just this is freshly raised, how isn't good it? They are. All right, okay. So, um, the rule freshly raised uh, has a few possibilities. So, the first time the unit enters combat, Robin rolls a d6 and. We see how effective they are. Go for it. We roll it back in there. Three. Panic. Oh. Oh. Unit is momentarily overcome by panic. For this round only, I need sixes to hit. Oh, that could be. That could save you because obviously you can just. Move that could the be costly. After yeah. Combat. Yes, I have feigned flight. So um, you have seven dice hitting on sixes. Yeah. I have not that many. Uh, my clash is five, so I have five dice hitting on fours. So you've got seven dice hitting on sixes. So, because they panic. <laughs> Oh, maybe it's, you didn't expect me to charge. I didn't expect to charge. No one, no one knows what's going no on. One no one's ready for anything. ended up there. Just like, oh. Two. Two. There's no tough There's fighters no in there. All right, I'm hitting on fours. Four. So I've got four saves of four? Uh, yes. One. One casualty, and I needed two saves two. of... Six. No, I still lost the combat. Um, right, so I 2d6 minus one. They're fine. So two for me, one for you. I just need to, so feigned flight, I think I can just move away, can't I? Yeah, we'll check it. We'll check it in a second as well. Second when it's your... There we go, that is the, the end of the turn. Right, we're going into the next Seljuk turn. This is um, Seljuk turn six. So it's been really weird, hasn't it? It's been one of those battles. It was really rapid at the start. A lot of movement up to this up to this clash, but you've pushed me back quite a long way. Um, my forces are effectively divided at the moment. Um, I'm going to see if I can get the nutters on the hill in, uh, to do something. They're fanatics, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, my main concern is this heavy cavalry. I know you've, you're only one away from being shaken, but they're going to cause me some problems. And of course, then we have the aftermath rolls as well. Um, this division is fine at the moment, but this division over here only needs to lose one more unit 
and then that division is broken. So if he puts or and if he can see this lot off, then they'll go. Um, so right then, let's get into the Seldrick turn. So, um, all is not lost ju just yet. Over here, my um, uh, commander, he joined his unit of archers. Um, that is Alp Baradir, and he has rallied a, uh, a casualty off of them. Camels have pulled back. I just want to shake that heavy cavalry unit if I can. I couldn't really bring the camels forward to attack. They're just going to die. So I feel it's best to just concentrate fire on them. Over here, using feigned flight, my uh, light cavalry have disengaged and they've all moved into um, a position to just fire arrows into the flank of that unit. Fortunately, that formed um, heavy infantry are not coming. <laughs> Through the, uh, through the forest, so I've got a little bit of a reprieve for the moment. On this side, things are a little bit different. I've pulled this unit of light cavalry back uh, to the foot of the hill to shoot at the heavy infantry there. This unit has moved to fire into their flank. And because I just want to try and just put some casualties down, I've got quite a spread of casualties across Robins. And it's, I need to start shaking some units and removing them. So um, the newcomer to the commanders, um, Al Ghalib has joined his fanatics, shouted, Follow me. Or as Robin, what did you say? Well, I just they're the fanatics and he's in combat with them now. Is it follow me or is it come with us? Like, I feel like <laughs> they just grabbed him as they charged down the hill. They want their vineyard back, they want their wine. Um, they, everyone wants that vineyard, so they that's what they've done. The, he's in the combat, they've come charging down there to try and see off um, the crusaders there. So it's going to be an interesting turn. I say that. That could have just been inviting disaster. So let's start with some shooting. Uh, and I think we'll just start on the left flank over here. So first of all, two dice into the flank of your unit there, hitting on fours. That's going to be a break test. Saved. Um, this unit in front, just firing into them, hitting on fives because they're formed heavy infantry. No hits. Do, 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 down the line, archers, they're disordered, firing into those knights, so they're going to be hitting on fives. Come on. One hit, one save of four. Damn it. Javelins? Javelins, come on, camels. Hitting on fours. One. One save of four. <laughs> Damn! Okay, so that's, that's not gone according to plan. Uh, over here, the first two shots, into, I mean, they're all, oh, actually, no, we have to work them out separately because yeah. you've got stubborn, haven't you? So the first two into the flank, hitting on fours. Uh, it's going to be a break test and one save. Yep, that's the save. And then the second one, another save. Stubborn. So you saved everything, but you got two break right. tests. So break oh. test for these guys up here. It's a straight up 2d6 roll. We're good. They're fine. On the other flank, over there. Good. Oh, don't believe it. Oh, this is going to be a battering. The, uh, the Killage Arsenal is not going to be happy after this. So, um, it's just down to the combat over here. So, my uh, fanatics have uh, charged the Mutuari. So, they get four attacks normally. They've got their commander with them, who's on a plus two. So, um, they get six attacks and uh, that will be hitting on threes. You've got seven attacks hitting on fours, and they're stubborn, aren't they? Yeah. So my guys have the fanatic rule, and the fanatic rule is they get plus one to their morale saves until they're shaken, right? Shaken. Basically, as Robin just put it, they think they're heavy infantry until they realize they're not. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Six attacks hitting on threes, no rerolls. Or four. four. Uh, seven attacks hitting on fours. Yep. Five. 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 Okay. I need five saves of four. That's uh, three, so two casualties. And four saves of three for me? Uh, uh, yes. I'm fine. What's the obstacle? Two casualties. Okay. Oh, stubborn. 
Stubborn. Stubborn. So you got two. One. No, one. So one one casualty, you win by one. Uh, I've got to roll for my commander, he's plus two. So 2d6 plus two, he's fine. So I've just lost a combat by one. So it's just 2d6, I should have done that for the break test really, shouldn't I? Uh, So it's just 2d6 minus one. Yeah, they're fine, that's gonna go on another round. So we'll just get the casualties uh, allocated. Okay, so that's the the end of uh, my turn six. Uh, Let's go see what the Crusaders are gonna do in response. Here we are, it's the Sixth Crusader turn. Uh, Robin, why don't you roll through what happened? So, over here, actually in the end, nothing really, because no. um, they're in combat. No real need to move the crossbows. I guess I, oh no, I, I'd failed an order by then. Yeah. Yeah, failed an order over there, because again, I was going to charge up and try and move things backwards. However, cavalry did manage to initiative charge, survive the incoming arrows or yep. the in. My commander is in that combat, so I mean, hopefully you won't obliterate me off the board. It's a good chance you will, but I just need to put one casualty back on you. Yeah, obviously there was some camels. There were. We, we looked, spent a bit of time looking up, didn't we, to see uh, whether or not the proximity rule would affect them, but it didn't because they were in open order. And so you could ignore them. ignore them. So these charged them. They charged the camels. What an amazing roll. Drove them off the board. Um, they'll be able to come back. They can, they can come back, um, but the count is off the board in a minute. So if I lose uh, another two units, yeah, so then work, they would... Yeah, working out a broken brigade, yeah. they're currently not counting. They count against me yeah. for the moment. Uh, and then over here, formed units, not going to go through these woods, so all of those just move around just to stop showing you my flank. That's it. And then moved here. across here. Yeah. So... so we have two com- oh, I've got a bit, got shooting, a bit of shooting, just a little bit. So who are these guys going to shoot at? Yep, so, so sixes. Sixes, yep, yeah, minus one for rare. I've been over 12 inches and minus one because I'm in open order. So I need two sixes for break testing. Yep, so yep, double six. Uh, just oh, one hit, yeah, but I not. Uh, so a single save of six? No, one casualty. Yep, we are. Which one do you want to do first? Do you want to do the vineyard? The in the vineyard? Okay, so it was a draw last turn. Um, so no one, so I have six attacks, you have seven attacks. I'm hitting on fours. Is that six, including your two from... Yep. I'm hitting on fours. You're hitting on fours. Go for it. Four. Four, okay. Four. Also four. So you need four saves of three. Hold on one on. No, come on, I need one casualty at least. No, I need four saves of four. Uh, one, and uh, I need to see if my lord was included. So I'll tell you what, you roll with 2d6 this time. Nope. He's fine. So I lost the combat by one. 2d6 minus one for the break test. Uh, that's free, but I think that's just break of shaken. Yes, it is. We already have. Oh, so, that's cavalry. Yeah, it's not going to be worse for cavalry. It's going to be the same. So, yeah, break of shaken. Otherwise, retreat disordered. Okay, break of shaken or retreat disordered. Okay, so they'll be going back up the hill. Uh, two seconds while we sort this out. Okay, so there they are. They've uh, they've retreated up the hill. They had a go at it. Um, Robin elected to not pursue. Um, that also they're not shaking. They're not shaking yet, so they still think they're uh, they're hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> down here, it's time for the heavy cavalry. They're going in nine. How many units is they have they killed? For two so far. Two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Soon to be three. Okay. So you get nine attacks hitting on freeze. Um, do you have tough fighter? You do, don't you? Rerolling one for tough fighter. I get six attacks hitting on fours. Two of those attacks are from this chap here. Oh, I don't know why I said that hole. That's quite good. Yeah, uh, that's eight. all but one. <laughs> okay. I'm hitting on fours. Uh, that's- four. So you need four saves of. Four. The trouble is, I am very close to shaken. You got stubborn, haven't you? Come on, please fail. Ah, oh, come on! Bro, your dice have been yeah, amazing been this game. Absolutely well, amazing. Resolution is, to roll high is, that, is that it? Yeah, <laughs> roll, roll <laughs> must, high must try harder. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I'm looking for sixes. I'm sure, it's going to be fine. You got lances as well. Yeah, sixes anyway. So sixes. Five. Only five. Only five. Do you want to roll to see if my commander was one of those? 
No. No, he's fine. Uh, so I have taken five casualties. So it's 2d6 minus five to my break test. Oh, dearie me. One. <laughs> One. Yeah, they're, they're gone. And he so, uh, he runs off to the nearest unit. Uh, no, he doesn't. We have to roll, don't we? Hang on two seconds. Okay, so we have to uh, roll for Alt Baradir here. Now, basically, the way this works, um, even though he, you know, he survived the combat, uh, he can still fall victim. So if he's in a, a unit that's been broken, we roll a dice. One or two, he's slain. Three or four, he's wounded. Five or six, uh, he's unharmed. If he's wounded or unharmed, he gets his normal 24 inch move and he's, he can make his way to his nearest unit if they're in range, which is there. If there isn't one within 24 inches, then he's captured or killed. Um, so who rolls for this? Is this- uh, is I this... think you roll, because on a one it's bad. <laughs> okay. And it's my fault, is that the, um, yeah, okay, right, let's go, all right. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> At least you got to kill something. <laughs> Alt Baradir has fallen. Uh, this is going to be a massacre when we work this out. Right, okay. Um, his division is broken anyway, so these guys have got to start retreating off the board. Um, over there. Uh, we've just got the forces of Al Ghalib to try and hold it. So, shall we see if it's going to go to another turn? Uh, Robin, do you want to roll? Four, five, six, it goes to another turn. All right. That way it is, right. Um, let's see what's going to happen. So, basically, I've got a turn of retreating. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm actually going to have to do. We'll try and mop up. <laughs> All right. Just, you know. I might just start pitching tents over pitch, Do you want some of my tent models? Just start pitching and press some wine. Right. Okay. We'll be back shortly. So... This is it. <laughs> These are the current Seldrick survivors, and uh, I've just taken stock. See, I am um, what we're referring to. I'm general custering it up here on this hill. Um, I am just very simply going to do some shooting. This is the difference in games like this because it's campaign play, and I'm trying to limit my losses. I could go death or glory here, but I've already lost one commander. I don't think losing two is a particularly good idea. Um, you could form them and charge. The heavy yeah. infantry that are in behind the wall. <laughs> and I could shake them, but what's that going to achieve? I need to just limit my losses. Okay, so we're going to fire two. Um, I can ignore them. Yeah, because they're in. Well, you can go for them because they're closest. To yeah, them. but you're going to be saving on threes. Yeah. Saving on fours. It's kind of six and two threes, really, isn't it? Um, I will go for that unit there. So I'm hitting on fives. So two units in on fives. So the first lot hitting on fives. Ooh, oh, two hits and a break test. Saving oh. on fours. Oh, oh, I'm taking, I'm taking two, ca two casualties. Bloody hell. I'm so excited that I've, I've done something. Hang on, where, where have the casualties gone? I know there's there should be plenty of wound tokens. Hang on. You have a perfect score. If you <laughs> no. shake this unit, I'm going to be really upset. Because you've got one more unit to shoot. Uh, yes, I do. So, in the next unit, one hit. One hit. One save of four. It's a fail. Get stubborn. I've already rolled. I've already rolled. Is it stubborn per turn? Oh, no, it's per it's attack. Failed. I'm sure it's per attack. A stubborn unit is allowed to reroll a single morale save each time you suffer a casualty. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm it. still taking the break test. Taking right? that break test. Uh, no. Oh, have I got any more? Oh. Uh, uh, six, that's yeah. retreat. Retreat in good order. Retreat in good order or stand your ground disordered. I might as well hold my ground disordered. Just You're just going to disorder yourself. Just I don't feel like retreating. Well... There we go. That is the end of the Seljuk uh, turn. I would say that they have lost the battle, but let's see what Robin's going to do in his final turn and how much salt he's going <laughs> to rub into this wound. Okay, so Robin's decided to only do one thing. And that's moved the crossbows into range. It's like the end of Waterloo when the in the film, in like the seventies film, when the old guards are standing <laughs> there and they just yeah. roll the cannons up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look at this battlefield. I've e I mean, dominated is not not the word really. Um, oh, perfect score. Nothing's shaken. All right. No, but there's casualties there. There's casualties. There's, there's, you have so many casualties, and I just can't. I did, they are disordered. 
Brilliant. That's great. What do I get for <laughs> right? So you've got you're shooting with these crossbows. Um, so it's hitting oh, on fours, yeah. Well, I can ignore them because they're. So I could go for. You could go for the, the, the fanatics. fanatics, yeah. But you need three casualties. No, you need one on them and two on them. They're saving on sixes. They're saving on fours. Fives to crossbows. Fives because they're crossbows. Okay. Ooh. Now I'll just shoot the the horses. The light, the light unit. All right, so hitting on fives. I'll take a break. At least I don't have sharps. All right, save it on sixes. Hey, just one casualty and a break test. The break test six. So that'd be retreat, retreat disordered. Um, and that is it. Uh, we'll go away and we will work out the actual points and we'll come back to you in a second where we will make the aftermath rolls as well for the campaign. Okay, so. It's been, it's been a bit brutal. So that didn't take very long to work out because we might as well say, I have a grand total of... Zero. Zero. I have not shaken any units. I have not destroyed any units. I have not killed any commanders. And I have not broken any divisions. They're nearly shaken. They're nearly shaken. They're nearly shaken. They're nearly shaken. So I, it's close. I just couldn't, couldn't get it. Robin, on the other hand has um, destroyed, broken, pushed off the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven units, which gives him 14 points. Uh, there are no shaken units on the battlefield currently, so 14. He did break one division, which uh, gives him 19, because we said that gave you five. And then he killed a commander for, commander for good measure to make it 20. So the result is... 20 nothing to the crusaders so not only have the crusaders found a camp they've um they've in inflicted such a defeat on the seljuks um that it's just gonna get it's gonna carry on down the centuries and hugely affect Doraleum. now uh we have to roll on the aftermath table so if you remember we have sort of played around with this a couple of times so um it's right here i'll bring it up on the screen so my role we've got a role for each division in the army so you can see here that robin has inflicted a major defeat on myself and he has um, received a major victory so I need to roll um, for both divisions. Both divisions are rolling at a minus two. However, uh, one of my divisions is going to be rolling at a minus three because their commander was killed. So let's just uh, let's just have a look at what's going to happen. So the division of Alp Baradir, well, Alp Baradir himself is dead. So, uh, but let's see how his uh, division um, fares once he's off the battlefield. So I'm rolling one d six minus three. Uh, five minus three is two. That's heavy losses. So um, the division suffers minus two force points. That takes it down to two force points, which isn't the end of end of the world. To be fair, they will. I will be creating another commander, just like I did have to before this game, um, before the battle of Doraleum. Now uh, the newbie who entered the battlefield and finished on on his little last stand up there, Al Gharib, uh, he uh, just suffers the major defeat, so he's rolling a, a minus two. That is a four minus two is also heavy losses, so he's also at minus two to his force points. So um, I'm going to be doing some licking of wounds after this and trying to uh, to muster up um, some more troops. Robin, on the other hand, gets to add two to both of his results. So, first of all, Robin, um, who's this chap? So that's Hugh de Caprino. Hugh de Caprino. Roll him 1d6 plus two. Oh. Uh, three. His division suffered light losses um, through that. So, he just goes down by one force point. Um, however, remember, at the end of this, the whole point of this scenario just was that you get to get a force point back. So, every commander in your army is getting one force point. So, essentially, he just stays the same. Um, and then the other chap, where is he? Down here. Yep. Is that uh, Robert de Boucheron? Okay, how's he doing? Better. Four plus two. Um, six. Fate has smiled upon you. The division suffered no additional losses. And then he receives his extra force points so for the scenario. So he goes up to four force points. Wow. Okay, so there we go. That was the Battle of the Hills. Uh, Robin, how do you think it played out? I guess it... Couldn't have gone better for me. <laughs> I don't want to say so. Yeah. It, no, it didn't look. It was. It was odd because obviously you came on faster because you moved quicker, and um, you went first, and I was thought I was going to slow you up. But I kind of, I've learned from the other games that I have heavy infantry. You have 
light cavalry. I need to stop chasing you round the board and just kind of mm. shove you around and then not waste my heavy cavalry chasing them round the board. Because I'm sure every, the first, obviously, last game was a bit of a different scenario, but the first games we played, I, every time I ended up with my heavy cavalry, who was slightly slower than yours, chasing you up a flank or something, trying yeah. to catch you. And I realised that I kind of just need to accept that you're going to be shooting at me with uh, a couple of dice and just hope it. Uh, hope it. In, Hope it pings off. You saved so many times, though. Oh, yeah. Your, your saves, yeah, well, like, I... I mean, they could have been shaken about in about turn three, and then I wouldn't have been doing they're, it. They're essentially responsible for half your victory points. Yeah. Um, they are amazing. But no, I mean, you did... Your tactics work perfect. I mean, you divided my army in half. Um, and and just... I mean, look, I, I own Nat Hill. <laughs> so I, forget, I did have two more force points in the investing you, in this game. You did. Your units cost less than a lot of things. So yeah. we end up... You outnumbered me unit-wise... Hmm. But if I could do something differently, it would be probably in my army selection to actually take a bit more infantry. Because what I did, I focused on obviously cavalry because there's a certain amount of cavalry I have to take. Um, however, I then, with my optional points, spent it on cavalry. I should probably, if I'd have taken blocks of spearmen and more archers, then I, you know, I'd have had a second line at least. Then that you'd have had to deal with as you came through, I guess. But you know. That's what we learned. So it's going to be interesting when it comes to the Battle of Doraleum. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching um, and, you know, taking the time. Uh, really hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun doing this. I know Robin definitely did. Uh, and um, we will be back with the next scenario once Robin has finished making the thing that we need for it, the river for it. Um, so uh, you'll get that as soon as Robin pulls his finger out. So anyway, guys, let us know what you thought down below. Um, I really, really hope you're all staying well and we will see you all again in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.